Hello. If you know a graduate, or if you are a graduate, will you beep your horn? No one? We have tons of graduates today. <laughs> well, thank you for uh, recognizing our graduates. And we look forward to in the fall when we can fully do that. I hope many of them are out on vacation on summer break, enjoying uh, some sun. We'll continue in worship with our prayer for illumination. Life-giving God, teach us this new way of seeing the world so that we might also receive and create a renewed world with all those we encounter. Amen. We're continuing with sermons from the book of Acts. Today comes from chapter three. Here's these words from the book that we love. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer at three o'clock in the afternoon. And a man lame from birth was being carried in. People would lay him daily at the gate of the temple called the beautiful gate so that he could ask for alms from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. Peter intently looked at him, as did John, and said, look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Jumping up, he stood and began to walk. And he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God, and they recognized him as the one who used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and astonishment at what had happened to him. While he clung to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the portico called Simon's portico, utterly astonished. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Some biblical stories are just worth rereading. I'd encourage you to do so with this one sometime in this coming week. It's a beautiful story of new life coming out of new ways of seeing things. In our Tuesday Bible study, I've been telling those who come that I'll serve as the group curator informing them about the artwork and the scholarship surrounding today's artwork, the artwork being, of course, the Book of Acts. And here's my little tidbit of curating today. It has to do with maybe an unnoticed thing in the text, the beautiful gate. You see, throughout the Book of Acts, there are literal landmarks that Luke writes about, the geography in Acts plays a literary role to move the story along. And I agree with scholars who wonder why this beautiful gate is there, the only reference to such a gate in the Bible. But I agree with them that the beautiful gate was probably real, but more importantly, Luke is using it as a literary device. You can kind of think of the beautiful gate as if we are now entering the new way of seeing things. The beautiful way of seeing, drawing on the front of our order of worship. Today's text is a window, a beautiful gate into the new way of seeing things that has been ushered in by the life and work of Jesus who Peter and John are imitating here. So what are we looking at through this window? Well, we're seeing a new perspective on things. Jesus, by his spirit, is at work bringing about new life, real life, life so different than the usual status quo.
And to see that in the text, the central trouble, yes, has something to do with this man who has been disabled from birth, but the core of the trouble has something to do gives and receives as opposed to the new gaze he will receive and have to give you see for this man who asks for alms day in and day out he is doing his usual thing his usual gaze his usual outlook looking up seeing people asking for alms and for those who would come by the temple they gaze at him in their usual way, someone only worthy of maybe some alms. But one day, this man sees Peter and John going into the temple, and he does what he always does. He does what he has learned to do because of life's circumstances. He asks for alms because that's all he feels he deserves. Consciously or unconsciously, he has somehow learned this. But then Peter and John look at him, but not in the usual way. The text says that they looked intently. They looked at him with a new gaze. They looked at him with the gaze of Jesus, a gaze that changes all whom it lands on. The question becomes then, will this man allow himself to be seen in this way? The new gaze given to him is an inv invitation to change his perspective, his usual gaze back. This man's usual outlook, a learned gaze of the world, has been interrupted. And that is the trouble of today's text the interruption of this man's usual gaze, and if he'll take up the new gaze that is being offered to him. Does this interruption feel relevant for today? Today, as we recognize those among us who have completed a milestone of graduating, of academically being interrupted all the time with new ways of looking at the world, we all could reflect on our usual outlook, our learned by life circumstances gaze of the world. Let's be real, this man's life circumstances are hard. In fact, if I'm honest, I get a little uncomfortable preaching on healing texts, especially when I know so many who would like to be healed from life's circumstances. And yet, I think we can all glean something from this text. This man, just like all of us, needed a new gaze, a new way of seeing things for his life to truly change. Are you stuck in your usual gaze of the world, of the church? Is Jesus interrupting you today and saying, look at me? A hurdle with many churchgoers is that we sometimes get stuck in the usual, especially when we're asking for help, just like the man in the text today. I love a good prayer list, and please always feel free to ask for prayer and update our prayer list. But we all need more than the prayer list sometimes. Maybe we need a coffee get together with someone. Maybe it's an ask for clearing out some things in the house that you just can't do because of grief. Maybe it's financial trouble. Maybe it's help with the kids so you can just have one night off. Now, I might be signing myself up for a lot of work in the coming weeks, but what I'm trying to highlight here is this. What might it look like if we as church said more to one another, look at us? What might it be like to live with a new gaze as a church like Peter and Paul? Well, though we may not be able to help in every way, just like Peter said, I have no silver and gold. 
we can try to be Jesus to one another. We could help one another get up, make our feet and ankles strong, and then walk through that beautiful gate together. We could interrupt our usual gaze and get a new gaze on life, a new gaze that brings about new life. And so today, my encouragement for you is to reflect on the ways you may be like this man, in need of a new gaze, in need of an interruption, in need of a growing imagination, so you might creatively live anew. But also, let me encourage you to reflect on how you might be like Peter and John too, how you might, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, be able to help others to their feet so that they may walk through the beautiful gate rejoicing as well. Today, let the graduates of our lives serve as a reminder of both the man who learned a new gaze as well as Peter and John who help us walk in new ways. Graduates, these loved ones in, our li- in your lives have loved watching you grow physically and academically. And I know we are all eagerly looking forward to you interrupting the world's usual outlook on things with creative, life-giving acts. Always know that you help us to find the beautiful gate. Friends, may we all be interrupted and gain a new gaze so that we may too walk through the beautiful gate into the fullness of God's presence rejoicing. Amen.